It is time for Rudy Giuliani to pay up. That is what a federal judge in New York has had to say today. May it please the viewers, I'm Rich Schoenstein. Welcome to True Crime MTN. And things just keep getting worse and worse for the guy formerly known as America's mayor, currently known as America's deadbeat. You may recall he is being pursued in New York in federal court for collection on the $148 million judgment that he owes to, Flor to Georgia election workers, Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss. He said after the 2020 election that they had engaged in some sort of unspecified fraud. It made their lives really bad. They were hounded, they were harassed, uh, they were stalked, and he had no basis to say it because like so many things he says, it wasn't true. So they took him to task. They filed a defamation claim. They won the defamation claim. They won a judgment of $148 million. They've had to go to federal court. And today there is a decision from Lewis Lyman, a United States District Judge in the Southern District of New York. I know Judge Lyman very well. I had two trials in front of him in the past couple of years. He's a great judge. And he has issued a ruling here that is uh, handing over some of the property to the plaintiffs and making some rulings on some of the other property. I'm just flipping through it. Let me give you a few of the key points. You know, all of this was determined in another court that they were, that, that Giuliani was liable to these plaintiffs and owed him this money. And so this is just a collection proceeding in court. Um, basically, they're going to have to, he's going to have to hand over a lot of personal property. All right. So here's the order. This is a receivership order. It, it declares the judgment creditors, Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss as receivers of certain property that's being turned over. That includes shares in Giuliani's penthouse apartment on East 66th street that they can now take and sell. That includes rights, uh, interests in, Giuliani's cause of action, now this is interesting, against President Trump for $2 million in legal fees that Trump supposedly owes Giuliani's. That will now be controlled by the plaintiffs and put into receivership. Uh, that includes non-exempt cash, which was being held in a checking account. It includes a Mercedes Benz, it includes furniture, a television, sports uh, memorabilia, a signed Reggie Jackson picture, uh, a signed Yankee Stadium picture. I mean, I don't, I assume it's not signed by the stadium, but it's signed by somebody. A signed Joe DiMaggio shirt, costume jewelry, a diamond ring, and a bunch of watches. All of that property goes into receivership where it can be sold and the proceeds can be used to pay down the judgment. Now, he's not made a decision yet about a Palm Beach condo that is the subject. And he's not made a judgment yet about one other thing, which are there are these four World Series rings that Giuliani got from the Yankees. Uh, he was a Yankees fan back in the day. And his son, Andrew, who himself is a former mayoral candidate, has put in a claim on those. Andrew Giuliani says those rings were gifted to him before any of this happens. So this judgment doesn't decide what happens with those Yankees rings. That'll be determined in the future. It doesn't decide the Palm Beach property. That'll be determined in the future, but it, it decides an awful lot. Now, one thing of interest concerning this $2 million claim against Donald Trump, Giuliani argued that that claim should be deferred, that that claim shouldn't even be considered until after the election, because Giuliani said, if you decide that now, it's going to send a misleading message prior to the election, and that wouldn't be good. Well, Judge Lyman shot that down, and I want to read you what he said because I thought it was interesting. Defendant requested that the court postpone the turnover of the Trump campaign claims for unpaid legal fees until November 6, 2024, the day after Election Day, expressing concern that plaintiffs might use this assignment for improper purposes, creating a confusing and inaccurate appearance, thereby generating and accompanying an unnecessary media frenzy. The profound irony manifest in defendant's alleged concern is not lost on the court. By his own admission, 
Defendant defamed plaintiffs by perpetuating lies about them. Defendant's lies cast unwarranted doubt on the integrity of ballot counting in Fulton County, Georgia, in the immediate wake of the 2020 presidential election. Plaintiffs are entitled as a matter of law to pursue any outstanding interest of the defendants in satisfaction of their judgment, including contingent, future, and intangible interests so long as they are assignable. So in essence, Judge Lyman did not buy at all the argument that that ought to be put off until after the election. We're seeing that now in a few different courts we should do. We're going to talk about one of them in a minute in Arizona. We should do justice now. It's not an excuse that there's an election coming up. That doesn't mean we put it off. So this is a real setback for Giuliani. This is a lot of property immediately gets handed over these plaintiffs, not anywhere near $148 million, but it'll begin to make a dent. Good for them. We'll see where that goes. Now, Late last week, we had a development in an Arizona criminal prosecution against Rudy Giuliani, and I want to talk about that for a minute. He is in trouble down in Arizona. He was indicted by a grand jury for participating in efforts to overthrow the 2020 election. You remember this. We had an election in 2020, you might recall it, and Joe Biden won. He trounced Trump by 7 million votes, uh, clearly won the election, and yet Trump and his people instigated a lot of bogus claims and bogus charges in states, and Rudy Giuliani was one of the people leading the pack. So he got indicted by a grand jury in Arizona, and what did he do? He said the grand jury itself was fraudulent because it probably only included Democrats and they were probably out to get him politically. And so he wanted to undo the indictment on that basis. One problem, wasn't true. Wasn't true, he had no proof that it was true. There was no basis for the claim whatsoever. It was as imagined and made up as the underlying conspiracy theory that Donald Trump somehow won the 2020 election and had it stolen from him. So there's a judge down there, Judge Bruce Cohen, He took on Giuliani's claim. He said it was pure speculation and abject conjecture. That was the nicest thing he had to say about it. But he allowed the prosecutor to put in an affidavit about how the grand jury was composed. Um, So here's something, some of the other stuff that Cohen said in his written decision. Uh, Defendant Giuliani filed a motion on August 30, 2024, seeking disclosure of grand jury selection records as part of his intended challenge to the grand jury indictment in this matter. Specifically, he postured a claim that grand jurors could have been biased or prejudiced or perhaps interested in the matter under investigation. When pressed by this court during oral argument, counsel for defendant Giuliani acknowledged that there was no underlying factual support for the claim. Again, facts and evidence don't matter to these people. They make it up on the fly. Rather, he seemed to assert since there was no information about whether political party information of grand jurors was known at the time of summoning, that lack of knowledge formed a basis to investigate it whether that information was possibly available during the summoning process. In other words, he argued he should be permitted to pursue the theory because it had not been demonstrated that the theory was baseless. I'm going to give you a speculative theory that something wrong has occurred, and unless you can disprove it, I get to investigate it. The judge went on, this court was not at all persuaded by the motion or the arguments made on behalf of defendant Giuliani that would support the supposition that political affiliation played any role in grand juror selection. I continue. I mean, I'm reading a lot from this opinion, but I think it's great. There are times in which dispelling unsupported allegations becomes crucial in maintaining public trust and institutional credibility. During those times, addressing a claim promptly and clearly is essential. Hopefully, it fosters a more informed environment, one in which fact rather than speculation is controlling. Here, despite there being no apparent factual support for a claim that political ideation was part of the grand jury selection process, 
the, this court directed the state to confirm what was a seemingly unassailable belief, that being grand jurors or jurors are, as a whole are not selected based upon affiliation or ideation other than perhaps their common affinity to constitutional principles. Um, and then the prosecutors provided a affidavit which said political party affiliation information as to potential grand jurors was not known or available to the grand jury commissioner or representatives when summoning a potential pool for the 93rd grand jury. And Judge Cohen wrote, this renders the claimed issue resolved. Bogus claim by Giuliani that maybe there was political influence in the grand jury down in Arizona. He had no support. It's completely disproved. It's completely false. It's completely fake, just like his claims about the 2020 election. They were fraudulent. They were fake from beginning. He kept saying it. Now, one other thing about Rudy Giuliani before we close for the day, uh, his name came up again in the documents released last week in the January 6th election interference case because among those documents were large passages of a book written by Mike Pence. And Mike Pence describes Rudy Giuliano's, Giuliani's role in the 2020 election and the efforts to undo it. And basically what Pence says, if you read the chapters of that book, is that the campaign lawyers were telling then President Trump, there's nothing here. We don't have evidence of widespread voter fraud. We don't have any basis to change this election result. And a group of outside lawyers led by Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell, uh, herself a complicated individual, urged for a different result. Giuliani told the president over the speakerphone, your lawyers are not telling you the truth, Mr. President. And as Mike Pence said, even in an office well acquainted with rough and tumble debates, it was a new low, adding that the meeting went downhill from there. And Pence basically pins it on Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell that Trump followed their advice, not the advice of the seasoned campaign lawyers who told him time and again there was nothing to do about the 2020 election. He had lost it fairly and squarely. There was no evidence of voters fraud or certainly no evidence of widespread voter fraud, but he relied on Rudy Giuliani. And that, ladies and gentlemen, appears to have been a bad, bad mistake. Now, the responsibility is still the client's. A client can say, I relied on this lawyer, I relied on that lawyer. This client was clearly lawyer shopping and he picked a lawyer who has subsequently been disbarred both in New York and in the District of Columbia. He picked a former mayor who uh, once was esteemed in the city of New York and now is disgraced. And Rudy Giuliani remains awash in litigation, both criminal and civil. None of it's going well for him. So good to see the courts in both Arizona and New York saying we don't have to delay this because of an election. We can get right to it. We can go ahead with the system as it's intended. We're going to continue to watch these cases and the other legal problems of Rudy Giuliani as they play out in the courts. Thanks very much for joining us. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Don't forget to like this video. My name's Rich Schoenstein. You can find me at Lawful Riches on X or on Instagram. For now, we are adjourned. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, a.k.a. the Florida Lawman, here on the fastest growing true crime channel, True Crime MTN. And we'll see you next time.